It's time for Washington Fish Quest. This episode, rig your jig for kings. Hey, Washington Fish Questers, shadowy figure here. <laughs> it's actually Blake. I'm waiting for uh, my buddy Shingo to come pick me up at my uh, community beach that I am lucky enough to have access to. And we're gonna go go hit some uh, South Sound Kings. So I was gonna do a, a King Salmon Jigging 101 to build on my uh, Jig Them Kings video. However, uh, I don't do a one-on-one -on -one until I, you know, really feel like I fully know the subject matter. And uh, although I would say I'm pretty proficient in jigging up kings, the one thing that I haven't tried is rigging up the jigs with different types of hook sets. Now, my friend Zach is an excellent, excellent, excellent king jigger, better than I am. And, you know, there's some set setups he swears by that I... Uh, haven't tried and I want to give those a try just putting the hooks in different places spacing them out between the jig even like a double hook setup so that'll be the purpose of this video uh, I will say my hookup ratio though is way better than a lot of people's when it comes to jigging I personally attribute it to having like a pretty slow jigging action because uh, you know I, they might sit there and shake their heads a bit but they don't really run from the jig I don't think you know I'll, I'll, I'll let it fall then I'll actually let it sit there for a while but my, my jig hookup ratio is way over 50%. And, uh, you know, I've talked to people down uh, at my local king fishery. And they uh, I've heard them say they've went as, as, as bad as 0 for 9, which has never happened to me. But uh, first time for everything. So I'm going to give that a try. So hopefully this video will get on some kings and I'll show you those different setups, if anything. Still waiting. Still waiting. Got about five minutes before Shingo City would be here. That little dot down there in the water is my dinghy uh, off of our homemade moorage buoy. It's a video I think I'll do someday, uh, mooring your boats on public lands. Some folks say my channel would benefit from a uh, gimbal on this cam that I use in my hands, but I'm telling you, that's plenty smooth. Plus this camera only costs about $100. <laughs> oh yeah, not sure if you can see him or not. Yeah, there he is. But here comes Shingo around the point. Hey Shingo, it's me, Blake. Then another fun thing is uh, Shingo and I got a, uh, oh you can't really see it there on the camera, can you? This is because it's so bright as all. But we got a, uh, you'll see it better in the future, it's a side scanner. Definitely the most expensive setup we've worked with and uh, we're, so we'll be toying with that probably throughout the day. There's uh, Zach at P&W Fishing Attic, king of the South Sound himself. <laughs> so we're not registering anything, but the side scanner looks pretty cool. It'll look even cooler when we get some fishies. I affectionately call this guy Jet Ski Cowboy. Really, really nice guy. So just to be clear, it's not a dig. It's it's awesome. In fact, we ask guys out here jigging all the time. It's a really cool setup he has there on that jet ski. All right, let's talk about three different jig setups at least here. All right, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but here's the Siwash hook I usually use, which is just, you know, a hook that you, you know, replace a triple barb with, this single point. Usually works fine for me. But the reason I like them in a terminal salmon fishery like this one, where you're basically in a bunch of hatchery fish, is this, uh, the long the long shaft really seems to stick in their lip. Uh, you know, it's pretty free moving versus like a shorter shafted hook, like an octopus hook. So then here's another option. So this is, I've bent the eyes at a 45 degree angle and I have the line running through it down to the hook and I just have a glow bead here between the hook and the jig. So that allows the hook to move around a lot freer. So you can see it's kind of, if that makes sense, you know, if the, if the salmon bites this hook and it's, well actually that moves around pretty dang free. <laughs> but I think it's part of it is it's, it's, uh, it's just, odds are I could have a better hook set that way, also a little more sporadic, sporadic type action as it falls with the uh, uh, line going through like that. Now, here is what uh, has been recommended to me a lot and I haven't tried yet, and I think I might be bold and go ahead and give it a try. It's the double hooks of death, uh, and then I actually have a bead stopper on here. So, when this falls, it's going to have some spacing between the jig and the hooks. Now, when I was originally told this, I, I, I asked, I said, well, is that because... Uh, does I get them like on the outside of the face or something, you know, and they go for it. I am told that they indeed will swallow these hooks. So uh, my guess is that they, you know, they're going to slip up the jig. And since the hooks are just kind of out here, 
free behind it, it kind of, you know, they can they can actually get it in their mouths, unlike if the hook's attached to, you know, a two ounce piece of lead. So, uh, yeah, these are three different jig setups you can try. Some I don't have pictured here, as you know. If you're pounding bottom, which I don't, I'm always jigging about three cranks off the bottom, so about three feet off the bottom. You know, some people actually have their hooks coming off the top of the jig so that it doesn't get tangled. And then a lot of people also use a swivel like a high quality swivel between the bottom of the jig and to connect the hook. So like on, on this, they, they do that, but, uh, I personally don't, but, uh, yeah, so there you go. There's some different, different setups to try. Like I said, uh, my, my connection rate, my landing rate is what I meant to say this morning is I'm really happy with it. And I know a lot of people don't have as much success with uh, landing the fish they hook, but who knows, maybe I'm missing a ton of fish because I'm not, uh, you know, doing, doing this kind of a setup. So, I'm actually going to be bold and give that a try now. All right, breakfast of champions. You do. I mean, in her case, I mean. Maybe. Oh, that's gonna work. Oh, yep, 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 yep. You got the, oh, 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 no. Oh, no, oh, no. I'm trying to school them. Got yours? Yep. I will I will take my time. Oh god. Oh, I just missed it, man. It, off. it came off right at the boat. All right, Blake. Sorry. Ooh, yeah, I don't know where. Coho or King? King. Boom. Oh, well, that would so much. Cool. First time ever. I, I thought I was tangled. Uh, that was weird. I was I was thinking that too. So Shingo and I just got into a double. Uh, I lost mine right at the boat, and I actually uh, could it. You know, I had about a one in ten chance I could actually net it because it was just kind of hovering there. So I lost it on the double hooks. However, I don't really blame the double hooks too much because uh, I was trying to net it myself. If it would have been the thing where I was fighting that fish and kept appropriate pressure on it, I'm pretty sure it would have been totally fine. But you know, this is just, I, I couldn't really angle it well and I was trying to get the net down so that'll happen. But uh, Shingo's was nicer anyway, I could tell mine was a little dark. Uh, definitely a school though. So that was great, man. And uh, he was just using the single point hook, so there you go. Either will, either will work. I guess maybe like a little mark down for the double hook, just because it wasn't so buried that it could get off. Well, despite uh, upgrading the camera, of course that was the curse. So it looks like it's just probably going to be those uh, two fish we got into there. Uh, yeah, uh, so I wouldn't hold it against the double hook rig that it didn't work because my hook set was really bad. And uh, also it just came to the surface and kind of like pooped out and then it, made, then it made slack on the jig. So it was kind of bad luck. But uh, at any rate, there's a couple different ways to rig up your jig. Uh, and congrats on Shingo there for showing me up. All right. Thanks so much. See you next time on Washington Fish Quest.